Hi, welcome back to Code Station 33. In our last lesson, we were looking at using conditionals, uh, if statements, with ors along with ands, and looked at different combinations. And we actually even learned about something called an xor. So let's just review that first. An or means one condition or the other has to be true to make the statements occur. An and statement means both conditions have to be true to make the statement occur. And then there's this interesting XOR thing where one or the other, but not both. In this case, we're going to apply those conditional operators, we call them Boolean operators, to while loops and see what effects we can have and, and see what kind of interesting changes we can have. Um, that makes our program from before maybe run just a little bit better. Because before we had multiple things happening at the same time. Like we would have both lights blinking at the same time or actually right after the green light was blinking. So maybe when we want to isolate those actions. And I believe we can do that with a while loop. So let's dive in and take a look at some code. So the first thing I have here is the exact same circuit we had before. There is no difference in the circuit. So we're going to dive right into our code, but let's actually let's run this first and see what different behaviors we notice. So first thing we do is we notice that when we look at the switches, if we're just paying attention to our switches, when they're both off, the red light is blinking. I'm going to turn them both on. Now they're both on, and the green light is blinking. Okay, so both on green light blinking, both off, red light blinking. Okay, let's turn one of them, leave one of them on and one of them off. Ah, now we have one of them on and one of them off. We have the two red and blue lights blinking together. Let's see if we can switch that and see if it works the same way with the other way. Yeah, with one of them on and one of them off in either set of switches, if either one of them, one of them is on and one of them is off, both the blue light and red light blink together. If they're both on, the green light blinks together. And if they're both off, then the red light blinks. So now we have three distinct states. That seems like it works a little bit better than we had before. Let's see what is helping us make that occur. So I'm going to look at the code. I'm going to stop my simulation. I did change a couple things that we did before a little differently. Uh, we still have our pins defined the same way. Our switch state is defined um, as an int. Uh, our void loop, same kinds of things, exactly the same thing. Didn't change any of that. The one thing I did change here is I noticed in the last one I had written int here. And I effectively redeclared it within the void loop, which can have some interesting results sometimes. In this case, it didn't matter. But I really didn't need to re-declare that. I could just left it as declared because the scope of switch state one and switch state two is the entire program um, rather because I declared it at the very, very top and I didn't need to re-declare it there. So now let's look at this while loop here. The first one is while both switches are off. So state switch state one equals zero and switch state 2 equals 0. I'm going to turn the LED pin on, the red one, wait a very short amount of time, then turn it off, then read the pins again. And for a while loop, I'm going to circle back up here to the top and check again. So each time I go through this, it takes about a half a second to go through this entire while loop. About a half a second, it will blink them, check to make sure the state still has not changed. And it will do this forever and ever and ever up until one of these switches change. So if I change them and turn one of them on, let's see what happens. One would be on. Well, if one is on and the other one is not on, this while loop does not occur. So if we have one on and the other one not on, in other words, it's off, it's a set to a zero, this while loop does not occur, so I would skip this completely. Then I would come down here. Now this is the interesting one. 
if one of them is on or the other one is on, if either one of them is on, I'm going to very quickly blink the green light one time. I'm going to do another digital read just to make sure no states have changed, just like I did before. But then I have inside this while loop another while loop, a while loop inside of a while loop. So inside this while loop, I'm now doing an XOR, which means only one of them is on. Doesn't matter which one, but they're not both on. Only one of them is on. If only one of them is on, but not both of them, I'm going to blink the red and the blue together. The reason why I have this structure is if I put this outside my while loop, my second while loop in here, if I put it outside of this while loop, we can actually just go ahead and do that. I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to copy it out. Cut it out, actually. Do a cut. And I'm going to paste it just outside of the other while loop. So now, if one switches on, the green light blinks. Now let's think about this. If I turn the other switch on, that would be the state of the XOR. Um, both are on, the green light will still just blink because one of them is on. It's never going to get to this code down here. Never. I'm just stuck in this while loop forever and ever and ever, and it's never ever going to get to check to see if one is on and the other one is off. In other words, only one of them can be on and the other one can be off. It doesn't matter which is which because I don't have this XOR inside the loop. So let's see what happens. Let's look at the code and just verify that that's what happens and hide the code. Let me bring this back over here. There we go. And let's try it this time with our new change here where we move that while loop outside of the other loop instead of having in it. So both off red light blinking. If I turn one of them on, green light blinks. If I turn them both on, green light blinks. If I turn one of them off, green light blinks. I've totally lost the functionality of the red light and the blue light blinking. If I turn them both off, now we go back just to red light blinking. So it seems like if they're both off, then the red light blinks. If one of them turns on, doesn't matter which one, then the green light blinks. But now I've lost that functionality where I have one of them on and the other one off. See, both on, green light blinks. One on, one off, green light blinks. I want to make it so that when one is on and the other one is off, then the red and blue blink together. So I'm going to go back to my simulation, go back into my code and say that, okay, if one of them is on, if one of them is on, before I blink this green light, what I should do is check to see if one of them is on, but the other one is off. In other words, not both on. And if that's true, then I should blink the red and the blue. If that's not true, it'll just skip this. This won't happen. And it'll just blink the red. Excuse me. Pardon me. Just blink the green. And then, of course, read the state again. Go back up the top of the while loop. And then check again to see if something has changed. Where both of them, if both of them are on, it's only going to blink the green light. If one of them is on, no matter which one, and one of them is off, again, no matter which one, then it's going to blink both lights. So let's see if this behavior now. Let's hide the code, start the simulation, and now we can see blow, both lights are blinking because one switch is on and one switch is off. So let's try switching it the other way. Boom, boom. Again, both lights are blinking because one of them is on and one of them is off. Now it is getting to the code that would blink the green light, but before it gets to actually blink the green light, 
it's checking the, can, the while loop that checks to see if one is on and one is off for our red and green light together. If I turn them both on, that means that conditional that checks to see one is on and one is off doesn't happen. But it is true for the green light that one of them, at least one of them, is on. It just so happens that both of them are on. If I turn them both off now, we can see that just the red light blinks. So this can be a, a kind of a fun combination where we can get all these different kinds of switches and have different patterns of switches make the lights do different things. And in fact, this simulates very much the way a computer microprocessor works. Depending upon which switches are turned on and off, then different things will have different behaviors. Uh, we can build entire number systems using this by turning different switches on and off. So that is our lesson for today, a pretty quick one compared to the last one. Uh, have fun playing with while loops and conditionals. I'll see you next time.